Hi guys! Today we're going to make a paint by numbers painting. Now I've always used to love this as a kid and recently I've been thinking about making a really big one to see if this is something that's also entertaining and enjoyable as an adult. So I got myself a nice set to try out. I bought this one online, you can find them at a lot of online stores. So if you want to try it out yourself, you can find it online. The interesting part of this video is that I am not going to make one by myself, but I also brought my boyfriend today, who is going to make one for himself. He has no painting or drawing skill whatsoever, so this will absolutely be a test to see if you need skills to make these paint by numbers. Since we will both be making the same painting, we will be able to truly compare them at the end. I'm looking forward to it. So, I got a few items from Carline to use for this project. Let's see what we have here. Uh, I have a cup of water to use to dilute the paint. And a plate, which I'm not sure what I'm going to use for. And then we have some tape to uh, secure the painting and some tissues to dry the brushes. So, let's open the package and see what we have in here. First off, we have the paint. Oh, that's a lot more than I expected. I was thinking more like 10, but it seems like 24. All right. Then we have the brushes. We have uh, three different brushes. Let's open this up. Nah, I only, only need one. And then we have two clamps. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to use these for. We'll see. And then finally, we have a, a cloth. The cloth to paint on. Canvas? Oh, right. Yes, a, a canvas. Well, this is what it's supposed to look like. But this really looks a lot more difficult than I expected. And here we have some instructions. I guess you can use this whenever you mess up. All right, let's begin. All right, now we have taped the canvas to a piece of cardboard so that it's nice and straight. And there are a few things that I'm going to pay attention to when I begin. First thing is that I have to pay very close attention not to paint over the numbers, um, otherwise it will be very difficult to finish. Second thing is that I'm going to start at the top left and move to the bottom right. I started with number 5 because it was the darkest color. I thought it would be smart to end with the lightest colors, because if you mess up with the darker colors at the end, it would cover all the other colors. And if you end with light and you go a little bit over the dark, it might have been less noticeable. I did notice that the painting was more difficult than I imagined, because the paint did not really cover the canvas very well. It left a lot of spots open, which not, was not very pretty. But I did not know how to fix it, so I just didn't. I tried to fill in every number from the top left to the bottom right, because I thought that would be the most efficient and you wouldn't have to switch numbers all the time. Only when a number was done. As I progressed through the painting, I did notice that it was incredibly satisfying to slowly see the painting fill in. As I uh, continued with the different colors, it became more and more clear that it actually became a ship. So that was very nice to see, and especially when I looked back at the time-lapse, um, it was very nice to see that it was so quickly filling up and becoming more and more pretty. Overall, the painting went quite well, but there were some complications. I noticed that it was very difficult to paint in the smallest parts, and it did need a smaller brush. So that may have caused some tiny frustrations. But I learned from my mistakes and continue with the smaller brush when needed. At the end of the first day of painting, 
I realized it would take a lot longer than I expected to finish. I thought it would take one day, but it was already taking six hours at this point. Then it was my turn to start unpacking. The brushes in the package looked fine. At first I was afraid it would be very bad quality and quite hard, because they said it wasn't really expensive. But luckily they weren't, and they were fine to work with. I found that the paints were similar to gouache paint. They dried almost matte and they dried really quickly, and also they were water soluble. Other materials I used were tape, tissues, a plate to mix the colors on, and a water bowl to clean the brushes on. Before I started painting, I made a color swatch to test out all the colors and see what they looked like. This would help me during the painting progress to choose what colors I wanted to start with. I also decided to dilute the paint with two or three drops of water because it felt quite thick. And thick paint will be difficult to use with all the tiny details. I used a toothpick to firmly stir the paint and that also helped to loosen it up and get rid of any clumps. Then I tried if it would be possible to blend the colors to smooth out some of the transitions in a painting. I tried to layer the paint but this didn't really work, so I'm glad I tested this beforehand and found out that blending the colors wasn't really an option. Then it was time for me to start the painting. It was a bit weird at first because the canvas had quite a rough structure, so I really had to move the paint around to get it in each fiber of the fabric and get rid of the white of the canvas. I knew that seeing the white of the canvas would in the end make the painting look less neat. So as soon as I noticed this I paid attention to loading my brush with a lot of paint and covering every single fiber of the canvas. This helped me to get an opaque and even color that helped create that neat look. In terms of color, I decided to start with the mid-tones. When I thought about it, I came to the conclusion that this would be easiest, because the more spaces you had filled in already, the easier it became to find the number matching the right colors. Also, the mid-tones mostly covered the sky, which were the most largest surfaces which made it a lot easier to fill in the details of the ship later on. This also allowed me to get used to the paint, the brushes and painting on this canvas. You could see it like sort of a warming up before diving into the most detailed parts of the ship. When I was about halfway done, I had filled in most of the mid-tones and the lighter tones, which left me to the biggest challenge, all the details of the ship. So, back at it. Now we are at day two and I'm slowly but surely making my way through the numbers. As I started to fill in more and more of the boat and the smaller details, I noticed that I had painted over some of the numbers of the still empty parts of the boat and that I had no idea what the numbers were. In hindsight, I could have looked at the instructions that were given to us, but that did not occur to me at the time so I just choose to fill in the parts with the paint I was using at the time. This resulted in very large spots of color in the middle of the boat and removed a ton of detail of the ship. This did bother me at the beginning because I wanted to beat Carline and make a better, if not a just as nice painting as hers. But as I entered day three of painting, I stopped caring about winning and just wanted to finish it. After three days and 15 hours of painting, it was finally done. It was incredibly satisfying to fill in the last spots of the painting and finally look at it completely filled out. I was very happy to finish it and it was quite a lot of fun doing it.
When I was halfway through, I started to realize how much time this project was going to cost me. The amount of detail on the ship was insane. Of course, I could have just ignored some of it and just painted similar colors all the same color, but I had already gotten this far and personally I knew that I would really hate myself later if I decided to rush this now. When I started adding the details to the ship in the darker tones, the painting really started to come alive. In the end, I also used the paper example to find out the colors of some parts that I missed and where I wouldn't read the numbers anymore. This really helped me to get those last details in correctly. Since the details were really small, I almost only used the smallest brush to do these, since the largest brush would be way too big. And this one was way more useful for larger areas of the same color. This painting took me a lot of time and in the end I had to keep myself from rushing it because I really wanted to finish it and be done. But on the other hand, I also didn't want to waste what I had already painted so far, so I tried to not paint for too many hours each day, because that would certainly make me more sloppy. And if I'm being honest, I really did want to have a nicer painting than Boss. So let's discuss some pros and cons of this paint by number set. For me, a definite con was that this took a lot more time than expected. Also, the paint was not always easy to work with, because the canvas was a bit rough. As a hobby artist, you should see this as completely something different from making a normal painting. You have no freedom in color or design whatsoever. So, it's relaxing and satisfying, but in a different way from when you're making your own painting. It's just something to keep in mind. Then some pros for me. A big pro for me was that the brushes were alright. I really didn't expect this, but I'm so happy that they were. Furthermore, it's also really relaxing and satisfying and most of all fun to do. If you're looking for a big project to spend a long period of time on, this is definitely it. It took so long. And lastly, you're quite sure to end up with a nice painting. So, for my pros and cons. The first con was that it was more difficult than I expected. I felt like having experience with painting would make it easier. So it definitely felt like I was one step behind Carline, who has obviously a lot more experience than I do. Second, it took longer than I wanted. It would be better to do one or two hours here and there, and not in long stretches right after each other like I did. Then for the pros, it is way easier like this to make something nice. I would never be able to make something this detailed without the help of the numbers. And because it was so detailed, you can't really see that it was a paint by the numbers thing. So even a noob like me can make something that you can hang on the wall. And finally, as I mentioned before, it's really satisfying to do. So I definitely recommend it if you have some time to kill. So now it's time to compare the final paintings. Buff spent about 16 hours on his painting, which resulted in this nice ship. And I spent around 26 hours on the painting and this was my result. So does it matter if you have artistic skills? Well, if you are more skilled, you might feel more confident with the brush and you know how to use the paint to get the most opaque effect. But overall, the most defining skill is definitely patience. Don't rush this, but do it because you enjoy it. It's satisfying and relaxing. So who do you think did a better job? Let us know in the comments below. Also let us know if there's anything else you want us to try. Thanks for watching. Bye.